Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Zazawa Tanks, back with another video. So how's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. Before I get started, I did want to uh, give a quick shout out to one of the viewers and subscribers. Uh, actually, uh, recently I was at my local fish club, which is the San Francisco Aquarium Society, and uh, I was about to leave. I had to run out and do something, and um, someone came up to me, introduced herself as uh, one of my subscribers, and gave me a gift. So, uh, so Veronica V, uh, thank you very much. She... Um, gave me this really nice aquarium co-op um, Christmas ornament. So uh, it really does mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's actually the first uh, gift that I've gotten from a subscriber. Well, kind of. Uh, actually, Corey gave me a t-shirt, um, but you know, that doesn't really count. He's uh, so big, it doesn't, uh, <laughs> it's not quite the same. But anyway, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot. Uh, it's a very nice gesture, so thank you very much. Uh, Christmas is over, obviously but uh, this will be prominently displayed on my tree uh, next Christmas and for uh, many Christmases to come, so thank you. Um, so today's topic is a little bit uh, different. Um, well, I guess it's not too different, but uh, I recently made a video taking you through my fish room, and in that tour you saw a lot of different tanks that have uh, a lot of African cichlid fry and juveniles in various stages, some being spit as recently as about a week and a half ago, to some that have uh, are, you know, at the size to be sold. I actually brought some to the local fish store today um, so that they can sell some. So what I wanted to talk about today is the fact that you really just can't stop the creation of life. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And there's really not a whole lot that you can do to stop it unless you're 100% sure that you only have females or you're 100% sure that you only have males. But in that happenstance or if, if, if it happens to be that you do have a female in a tank, they're going to breed. Sometimes the fish uh, will survive. So um, as I was kind of going through all of my different tanks and taking stock of what fry I had and at what stages they were so that I can plan on growing them out and selling them in different stages. I thought, why don't I just kind of take a look around in some of my filters to see what's in there. So I decided to take a look in my sump filters and also behind this background. This is a 3D background from Universal Rocks and I wanted to see what I would find. So. Um, when I looked in my wet dry sump filter, I actually found a couple of Mboona fry. So this means that they had to get sucked up by the overflow, get past the little screen that I have in the overflow, go down into the wet dry filter where there is filter floss. They had to bypass the filter floss, go all the way past all the blue bio balls into the uh, sump chamber down below. So um, somehow they made it, they made that miraculous journey. So there were a couple fish down there and uh, I had to, you know, st turn my uh, sump off and, and um, catch them. But uh, anyway, I thought that was pretty neat. And uh, while I was doing that, I thought, why don't I uh, check this sump? Um, I didn't find anything in this sump. I didn't take it apart, but I didn't see anything. So I'm not really gonna, uh, get too involved in tearing it apart, but you never know. There might be something in there. I'll, I will see it in the future, but uh, I highly doubt it. But what I did find is I decided to take, take a look behind this tank. In order, in order for me to do that, I have to kind of kind of snake my body behind this tank, and that's not very easy. I'm 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 not fat, but I'm kind of broad, so I had to kind of shimmy behind the tank and. Uh, look behind this background and I saw an African cichlid back there and it wasn't a tiny fry. It's actually a juvenile that's probably a good inch or so long. It's kind of yellow in coloration, yellow orangish. So um, I don't know how it made it back there. Um, I do have some holes drilled into this background. That's really the only way that it would have made it through. Um, and it was only one fish, so I don't know if it maybe was just a, a fertilized egg that somehow made it back there and kept kind of spinning around in the current until it became a wiggler, or if it was actually uh, one of the fish had a mouthful of fry and it was the only one that survived. Now, the reason why it surprised me is I checked these fish 
on a regular basis and I you know see if there are any females that are holding and I shouldn't have many females in here now I might have one or two at this point um, if I see one that's definitely a female that is holding I will pull her out and then I'll put her in my female tank downstairs so um, as time has gone on I've slowly um, eliminated the females not I didn't eliminate them like I didn't put them down I just moved them to a different tank I'm not gonna get rid of them one of the females the female might be downstairs now who knows I don't know how long ago it was I'm guessing by the size of the fish that was probably about maybe three or four months ago probably about four months ago that uh, that little tiny fry or that egg made it behind the wall so I'm just gonna leave it there for now it has really good water quality because I change this water twice a week and I've, I've talked about that before I do usually about a 70% water change when I do it and that's about every three to four days um, it's getting food because um, I'm assuming that food particles are either making it over the top somehow or getting um, sucked in through that uh, through the holes that I've drilled so I'm just gonna leave it there for a little bit longer um, maybe a week or two until I just find some extra time to take this tank apart so I really don't want to do that because it's a pain in the butt um, I'm going to have to uh, do a big water change catch the fish pull the background out catch the fry and then um, put it all back together so it's not gonna be an easy task so I'm gonna wait until I need to do it there's enough room back there there's actually some larger pockets because of this type of background um, where the rock formations are sticking out there's actually big pockets behind there so there's enough room actually for you know a decent two inch fish to kind of swim around and, and live so eh, I'm just gonna leave it there until I you know have the time and the energy to pull them out so that was it uh, just a quick little uh, chat about uh, the fact that you just can't stop life from happening and and sometimes you know a fish is just gonna find a way to survive and live uh, regardless of the uh, conditions so uh, I thought that was pretty neat before I go I did want to mention uh, quickly that uh, some of you have asked about um, uh, buying fish from me I'm not going to be shipping any fish um, I, I'm just not prepared to do that at this time there are a lot of people out there that do that that do a really good job of it so I don't really feel like that's my space so um, as far as the fish that I'm breeding I'm just selling them locally if you do want to get some fish that I've bred let me know and I can tell you where to get them here in the San Francisco Bay Area um, specifically the African cichlids that I dropped off today were a bunch of Mbuna and those are at Hung Ming Aquarium which is um, in uh, South San Francisco slash Daly City uh, near the Cow Palace so um, I will put uh, their information in a comment down below and um, they will also be getting a lot of my peacocks so I think I have roughly 200 or so African cichlid peacock fry different types so if you are interested um, they will have them in the future. That's all I had for now. As always, I appreciate your viewership. If you haven't done so, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll catch you on the next one.